hoping we'd have a big group because I really want to talk a lot about report cards and like just gain some other people's thoughts about, oh, Jenny, uh, about, um, you know, like where are they finding their information uh, for their comments? Uh, but I guess you four will just have to do. No, I'm just kidding. I'm so excited you're here. <laughs> um, okay. So we've got a one star review. Guess who? Uh, I got a double whammy here for you. There's two one star reviews for the same book because I couldn't pick. They're both just too good. So this one, the guy or gal says, the book was trash. They didn't even make bacon or pork chops or anything like that. Crafted by a whole mess of vegans. It's simply <laughs> deplorable. Okay, so that was a hard, you can't really guess it. So let me show you the other one. Okay, not to be mean, but uh, to anyone, but why does everyone like this book? Not that I don't like animals, but why does everyone love this book so much? I could write a book about a cat saving a monkey. Would you automatically buy it? My point is, what's so good about a spider saving a pig? The movie's not one bit better either. This has to be the number one worst book I have ever read. Is this Charlotte's Web? How dare this person? <laughs> what? A hundred points to Valerie. <laughs> Vegans must have wrote it, you know. Is the other one a Mercy Wat Watkins book? Or Mercy Watson? No, they were both uh, the same for Charlotte. Both the same? Oh. Yeah, but I couldn't pick which one I wanted to use. You chose the other one because it said vegan. Yeah, that's a strip. <laughs> hey, Graham. Honestly, it's so funny going through Goodreads, the one-star reviews for, like, popular books. They're just, people are so angry. Um, and have a lot of time on their hands to, like, write an angry post. Yeah. <laughs> and some of them that I was reading, they were like, the first time I read it, I gave it two stars. But this time, I gave it one star because blah, blah, blah. And it's like, why? Why are you writing your second review? Anyway. <laughs> you can't hold writers down. Am I right? Um, right. Okay. So today we're going to talk a little bit about report cards. Um, got report cards on the brain. I'm a planner, and I'm really scared that they're going to just come out of nowhere. So um, I'll just let you read that. Yeah, so I, I heard this on a podcast, and I wrote it down in my phone notes, but I didn't write down who said it or what podcast it was on. I think it was me. No, no, it definitely wasn't you. Um, definitely not. Anyway, I just thought that was a really interesting take on it. Like, yeah, we have a lot less data. We didn't do our beginning of the year on demands. We didn't do all these things where we gather numbers and letters. Numbers. Um, yeah. Yeah, but we have so much more information. At least in third grade, we have a lot more information. Than I than I normally do. Graham's giving a thumbs Isn't up. Isn't it amazing that we're not defining a kid by a number? Like, yes. <laughs> I'm not just a number. And it goes. Uh, I feel like it goes back to that whole um, that the workshop model. It's not a deficit model. It's not like, ooh, we got to patch all these holes that you don't have yet. Because it's so individualized, you you meet each student where they are, and but by starting the year by gathering numbers and saying like, oh, you have to be a thirty if you're at third grade, but you're a twenty four, so you're not here yet. Like we need to bring you up to grade level. I think I don't know. The whole mindset of this year has been different. Um, so report card comments look like this for reading and writing, except for KG one. Jenny, but you know, you're still KG2, so you have to do a little bit of this. <laughs> um, so in reading, we comment on reading engagement, oral reading fluency, and comprehension. Um, those indicator words, I believe, come from the DRA sections. We don't do DRA anymore. Um, I have a question. Yeah, sure, Valerie. Do we have, okay, so looking at this, 
Mm-hmm. I'm already still like dabbling into reading comments. Do yep. we need to write in each area about this specific topic or do we have like a general box that says like, this is reading? It's one comment that's a, it's one like paragraph that's this is reading. Okay. But my understanding is we're supposed to comment on each of those. So last year, you know, first semester was the first time we ever did comments only. Mm-hmm. And remember, we had to say an indicator word, developing proficient or something else um, about either if they're proficient in all reading, you can say it once. But if it's different for each area, you would have to say like they're proficient in reading engagement, but they're developing their oral reading fluency and and then give evidence. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I'm just wondering thoughts on because these words come from the DRA and we're not doing DRA and we haven't done any formal reading assessments. Are these words still relevant? Um, or is there a different angle that these comments should take or different areas they should cover? Can I ask, is this for this set of report cards or is this just in, in down the line in the future? Um, I don't really know. I don't have the power to change this. I'm just wondering, <laughs> like, if this, does it seem relevant to everyone who, you know, will be pretty deep in writing report cards based on these areas? Like thinking about your students now and what you want to tell parents about them, does that match up? Do you want to tell them about their reading engagement, oral reading, fluency, and comprehension? Or are, is there something else that would be more relevant? I'm just curious, honestly. How are we defining reading engagement? That's a good question. Like an active reader? Like, are they actively participating in like reading? Is that reading engagement? Like, so I I started like on the draft, like I'm drafting with the kids and I'm like going through them. And so like, I'm really talking about like kids choosing books that they have connections to. So like that's like what I would see is reading engagement. Like they're choosing books that they want to read and like they're interested in it. Yeah, I, I, mean, what, I might want to have the word identity in there somewhere. Classic Graham. Word smither. Would that be a, a completely different section or would that go with reading engagement? Jenny, the sound's not working. We can't hear you. I saw the myth. <laughs> It says like, you're unmuted, but it's like totally silent. Maybe, in, I don't know, maybe even instead of reading engagement, I think identity says so much, you know, maybe it's implicit that it would be part of the identity, would be implied the engagement, or even better than engagement, the agency, as a, you know, all that stuff tied together. It, engagement implies itself a passive, like I'm engaged in, in something somebody else is doing, right? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering now that you've said this, I'm wondering how relevant is this to our school's mission and all the other stuff for the values that we have. Thanks We're not for- doing DRA anymore. Like, why are we using? Well, I think it was really uh, relevant. Oh, Jenny, don't worry. You can come to my classroom if you want. Or whatever, it, you know, uh, identity confidence. Um, so when we were all giving DRAs and it matched up to the categories, I mean, and then we'll see this in the writing, this matches the writing rubric, the Lucy mm-hmm. Hawk, that we're supposed to be creating the published pieces on. However, at this point in the year, I usually have about three published pieces finished so I can, you know, um, look at growth, look at different areas. But at this point in the year, it just doesn't seem, I mean, I can write comments on them, but it doesn't seem as, relevant as like as it once was but just i guess just in general is is engagement the thing we're looking really looking for now in our school isn't it the agency the identity the kind of empowerment is engagement seems a little bit almost um kind of old-fashioned for us like you know what i mean like it's it's more than engagement now isn't it 
I think engagement is the first step. And I think uh, what we're looking into is what, how, what is that engagement leading to now? Like, you know, how is it adding to their growth? And, you know, like, like you said, agency, you know, when you finally move forward with that engagement and interest and what are you actually doing with it? Well, yeah. we still give the DRA in the lower grades. And I feel like it's so um, subjective. There's those two questions, you know, who reads to you at home or whatever, and what kind of books do you like? And pretty much almost everyone gets like a pretty high school in reading engagement. It's like, yes. But how that translates to actually like a, a comment on the report card or whatever, the progress report during virtual school is different. I think that we could elaborate more into, you know, their identity and growth as a reader or something as Graham was saying. It's kind of an empty passive phrase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Jane, old-fashioned passive. Yeah. Um, yeah, what so then you replace yeah, that you whole section it. with like reading identity. Yeah, what'd you say, Graham? You said something good. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. Reading identity and and um and perhaps something along you know, agency's been our one of our big kind of words that's driven us forward in the last few years. And I think, you know, if we look at our um mission statement and, and our values and all those things. It, engagement's never mentioned in any of that stuff, right? It's much more about agency and identity and um, ownership and all those kind of things that we're kind of looking at. Is that Brent? Yeah. What up, Brent? Love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, what were you saying? No, just kidding. <laughs> Nothing, nothing interesting. <laughs> uh, no, I think, you know, this just, I don't, this wasn't my purpose. Um, I should have just not asked that whole question. But I think this is, brings up a really no. interesting conversation of like, yeah, th these words come from the DRA. We haven't given DRAs this year. We're no longer giving DRAs, not even in the younger grades. And when you give the DRA, you get a number for each of these areas to tell you if they're on grade level or not. Right, so there's like a reading engagement score and an oral reading fluency score and a comprehension score. But uh, oh, thanks, Denny. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so then, what would make this better? What would make this more relevant? To still have three indicator terms, or to open it up more, or to define things? Can I ask, do you have um, these terms on the on the reading assessment that you use in grade three and up? Or is it grade two and up? Uh, all grades are now doing teacher's college reading and writing project. Let me pull up. So what does it say on We're there? Not yet. We haven't got this stuff. Well, we have it in the building, but no one's given formal reading assessments. So like... They, when they're in the building, we do. This year, it will happen when running records are expected to be done. If that makes sense? Yeah. I believe that was the plan as per last year when they were ordered. I guess I'm just not familiar with that. So after you give the running record, does it give us a score or? Yeah, let me the show you. Like, um, Find one of these. Um, teacher. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so this is probably a little hard to see, but it's. There's an accuracy rate, a reading rate. Um, so you listen to the student read. You notice reading behaviors. Um, then there's a retell, right? So reading behaviors, I believe, is fluency. 
right? Self-monitoring, um, reading with intonation, unfamiliar vocabulary, reads with fluency. Then at the end, then there's comprehension questions. Then this is the basic assessment. It's just a yes or no. Did they have 96% accuracy? Did they read at a fluent reading rate? Did they give an accurate retell? And if they get all yeses, then you go to the next level. But there's no reading engagement. Right. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I think, I mean, in thinking about these words, I could, based on the conversations I've had with kids and the notes I've taken, I could comment on kids' reading engagement. And what that means to me is reading from like different genres, uh, a high volume of reading, an interest in reading, but I guess without like an actual definition. You know what? I don't think I have any DRA copies, but we should look at what it says on the DRA. Do you have the, like the teacher copy of the DRA, Graham? No. Is that why you raised your hand? Oh. No, I was just saying all the stuff you you were talking about there was um, more like uh, was was sort of going towards a, a reading identity rather than a reading engagement. Say I don't know. I do. I completely agree with you. I think that. The word reading, or the, the phrase reading identity encompasses reading yeah. engagement, but says a lot more. Um, and also, again, the words we choose shows what we value, right? Do we value engagement or do we value identity? You know, I, I love all that thinking about what we're sending out as messages to our community and to ourselves as teachers by the words we choose. So, I don't know. Interesting thought. Well, you got anything for us, Val? It would be on the big page uh, with like, that looks like a big rubric. And they don't have it on progress monitoring. It's only on the full DRAs. Who's <laughs> I just wanted to say that I agree with you on, you know, when we put it down as a criteria on a report card, it shows what we really value, uh, really on what really Graham was saying. And like you said, you know, we value engagement, but like you said, it's a small part of, you know, the real identity. And it should cover all those things that you just said, because I, it didn't strike me until you actually brought you broke that down into so many things, and reading engagement was just so was just one of them. So you know, um, it is. So if we think about what is it that we value, do we really just value just the interest, or do we value them? You know, exploring different genres and you know willingness to you know explore different um, different genres. That that thing uh, builds again on identity more. And just the engagement. So I, I just wanted to agree with what you write, what you were saying. And honestly, I'm new to this. So for me, at first, I was just like, engagement means interest, you know. And at this, interest is not something that we value it. But then, what does that interest really lead to? That is what we, you know, um, should also be valuing. Yeah. Thanks, Tammy. You have your hand raised. Do you have something to add? <laughs> It's been raised since I said Mercy Watson. <laughs> Here. There. <laughs> Sorry, I froze. Sorry, what? I missed it. <laughs> you still were there telling jokes? <laughs> no. Okay. I read well, them 20 minutes ago. Yeah, let me. Uh, we got about nine minutes before the assessment. Uh, the, oh my gosh. Before the um, meeting's done. So. I just pulled this uh, reading assessment uh, pyramid from our literacy handbook. So we have a reading and a writing. Um, um, these are like the assessments we take. And so I looked through this and when you look at this, we're not doing map. We are not doing screeners. We don't have cornerstone assessments. Uh, we haven't done running records, any official, right? None of these listed here. Um, 
informal running records, progress monitoring, logs, inventories, maybe, maybe some people have. Um, and notes and observations. So for me personally, I think I only really have the bottom layer to report on. Same, same. Yeah, maybe I do have a few uh, like assessments from students who, uh, like maybe two kids that I've done other reading assessments on, some more formalized things, but um, okay. So then writing, same thing, we don't do map. We didn't, uh, we didn't do on demands. Third grade, we have two published writing, but only one that's actually graded. No pre on demands. Uh, Again, so really, in third grade, we have one of these and notes. And this is linked, all of this is linked to the calendar invite. This literacy handbook is linked. I don't know how relevant it is anymore because everyone's different now in district. But so my thinking was, which is different now because of the conversation we just had, but I was wondering, like, what evidence do we have to support what we're going to say about each of these areas? So when you think about what you might write for your report card comments, like, should a place for children to do self-assessment in their reading habits, identities, they run away. Maybe, like, a goal journey? Is that, like, what you're talking about, like, having students create, like, an authentic goal? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can do it. We can hear you. <laughs> Self-assessments and their reading habits and identities on the report card. Um, yeah, maybe. I think for um, our report card, one of the things I'm going to include is uh, problem flexible problem-solving grambling. Thanks. Um, well, we do flip grid posts. We're doing two before report cards are due, and it'll be like, tell me what you've learned this year. So I'm gonna include what they say in that flip grid post in the comment that I write. So I'm not sure if I'll do an additional piece where they write their own kind of thing, like profile graduates. This will be more like I just transcribe, which maybe mm -hmm. is more like what you guys are doing. I like your thumb smiley. So, um, Okay, so I'll add that to um, uh, what other evidence might you have <laughs> to For support reading. like yeah, I guess should we start with reading? Probably all we can get through. I don't know. Since, uh, fluency posts. We've done a few of those, like fluency check-ins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have those on Flipgrid, though. Same. Yeah, same, same. Um, I have just, like, uh, ooh, yeah, good one, Musma. So looking at uh, Epic Books to see what they're reading. Uh, I was thinking, reading logs, yep. Um, I was thinking of like a reading engagement survey. Mm -hmm. Just like a really simple Google forum of like, this is how I felt about reading at the beginning of the year. This is how I feel now. This is what I like to read. I have they did that, like when we shot for books for them, like they chose the books, the genre of books that they wanted to read and like why. So mm -hmm. a Google forum would be really good. I used to think now I think, oh, Graham, nice. How would you um, gather that? Like, would that be a seesaw post or would that be in a conversation gram and you would just take notes or what are you thinking? Yeah, probably just talking to them, I would say. I think, I think we get much more authenticity and um, yeah, just from a conversation. Seesaw is always a little bit. Um, I don't know, take him with a pinch of salt. Yeah. It's, not always, it's not always them, and it's not always uh, as pure as it might be, in my 
that's in, in my experience. Yeah. For writing this time, this kids are just turning in published pieces this week. And next week I'm gonna meet with every student and go through the rubric. Uh, so they're kind of gonna write their own comments, I suppose. So I'll go through and say like, tell me about your lead. What did you think about when you're crafting your lead? And tell me, how did you organize this? And um, so publish piece information. Conversations, uh, evaluating. Yeah, self-assessment rubrics, I think, for us, and and then um, just the data that they've been gathering on themselves. We've kind of been asking them to notice what type of write writing they've been doing. So they've been gathering their own data and then reflecting on that. I suppose. Yeah. How about, oh, yes, Tammy. Oh, I was going to say a bunch regarding comprehension, like their, but it goes along with what Graham was saying in a conversation, their ability to retell or take a sneak peek or make predictions or um, make connections to the story. So, the last thing, because there's just one minute left here, um, I just wanted to remind everyone of the reading and writing continuum. This is uh, Bonnie Campbell Hill's work, and oh, that's the wrong link. Um, this was approved by Shan last year to kind of formalize our language a little bit. Um, so, in your comment, these are coded for. The blue, I think, would be what we call writing in, uh, engagement. Let me go to the reading one. Um, so if you're looking at, for me in third grade, I would be starting here and thinking about, well, do they read early reader books, harder early reader books, follows directions. Uh, and then you can actually just lift phrases from this um, continuum and put it straight into your report card comment which I find to be pretty helpful. Um, yeah. So that's linked to the uh, slideshow as well, which is all linked into the calendar invite. Yeah, so it's three o'clock. I wanna respect your time and uh, let me know. I don't know, should we continue this conversation about the wording or should I just go talk to Shan and see what he thinks? I really like seeing all of you too. <laughs> Any thoughts? Is it an HOD thing, do you think? Yes, thank you. Good idea. All right. Well, then, maybe we'll all have some answers for you next week, right here on Literacy Lunch. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for showing up. <laughs>